Binge watch and learn on TRS Clips. Let's paint a present scenario. Uh, maybe a tertiary question hmm. is also explain what nuclear winter means. Oh, that's a frightful prospect. Okay. Uh, you also asked me whether anybody is crazy enough to start off a nuclear war. Yeah. I hope nobody is. I hope nobody is crazy enough to do that. I'm sure that uh, people have sane minds and nobody is going to press the red button. But who knows? I even, hope Even North Koreans? I don't think the North Korean leader is crazy. I don't think Mr. Kim is, is a madman. Even though he's painted as such, he's kind of eccentric and all, so it's easier to paint him like that. I don't think he would do that. Yeah. I, ho I hope he doesn't do that. Yeah. Uh, so see, we went through the Cold War and no such thing happened. We came close a couple of times, but uh, sane minds overall prevailed. So today, I think uh, we are in a slightly better situation and there's not any urgency to press the red button. So I think it, it I, I genuinely hope and pray it doesn't happen. Now, what's nuclear winter? Okay, so this, to understand that, we have to consider the scenario in which somebody is crazy enough to press the button. So let's say somebody is crazy enough to press the red button and someone, let's say, from Russia. Okay, let's let's consider the hypothetical case of Russia. Somebody in Russia, some military commander, for some reason, presses the red button, shoots off a ballistic missile towards the US. The US has automatic systems that will detect a ballistic missile launch and they will calculate very rapidly that the traje trajectory brings it on US territory it is inevitable that you have to respond before the missile hits you. So they're going to set off a bunch of launches to retaliate. Once the, so the, once the Russians see that the, a bunch of missiles is coming towards them, they're going to send some more. And within maybe minutes, you're going to have hundreds of missiles being launched at each other. Ballistic missiles typically take about 30 minutes. Cruise missiles, they may take hours. But And, and we have anti ballistic missile defenses and countermeasures and all that. Let's say they take care of 50% of the missiles, but we have thousands of missiles and nuclear warheads on the planet. So eventually, in this unfortunate hypothetical scenario, missile, the warheads will start hitting the US and Russia. They will not only hit uh, the major cities, they will hit all the military sites. And the Russians know that according to NATO uh, protocol or according to the NATO treaty, if the US is hit with a nuclear strike, its NATO allies are obligated, obliged to retaliate, which means that France and Britain are also targets, which means they will also take out France and Britain. It's going to be a catastrophe. So then what happens? You have thousands of nuclear explosions in Europe on, on US soil, hopefully not in Asia, but it doesn't make any difference. What happens is that once these nuclear explosions start going off, they're going to vaporize entire patches of ground create big craters and all that vaporized matter material is going to go high up into the atmosphere because it's incredibly hot there is going to be a lot of burning of cities and forests and trees and whatnot organic material which is going to give off a huge amount of carbon which will go up into the atmosphere as soot and after a few hours you're going to have the an entire planet-wide covering of carbon soot high up in the atmosphere which is going to block out the sunlight and this situation will persist for months or maybe years, depending on how many nuclear warheads have gone off. So even though most people won't die of nuclear contamination, radiation, uh, radiation sickness, poisoning, all that, what will happen is that in the northern hemisphere, at the higher latitudes, even at medium latitudes, there's going to be uh, freezing temperatures, which will prevail for days, weeks, maybe months or even years. Uh, various calculations show that it could kill off about 90 or to 99 percent of humanity. People in the equatorial regions may survive, but it's going to destroy the entire global system. Uh, you know, there could be food scarcity and all. So it could be kind of like the aftermath of the Chicxulub impact that happened 66 million years ago, which killed off the non-avian dinosaurs. So that's what a nuclear winter is like. It's a complete disaster. And that's what will happen if somebody presses the red button. And even sends one missile. Even sends one missile. That's that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> ah, terrible, terrible nightmare scenario. That's what we are living on the brink of every single moment. Any signing off notes for this uncomfortable podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you, you know, we human beings have good sides and bad sides to ourselves. Everybody has a bit of a bit of light, a bit of dark. We're all shades of gray. I hope that overall, in the long run, at the end of the day, the better side of our human nature will, will shine through and take us through this difficult time. Uh, in the long run, maybe we will go and colonize 
I mean, settle down on maybe the moon, on Mars also. I hope we don't take that over the nuclear technology, nuclear weapons technology. I hope we use science and technology for good. Uh, the nuclear weapons conundrum that we have today is not something that's going to be solved, solved anytime soon. But I hope that the leadership... Uh, is uh, has a sane mind and doesn't use it overall i am optimistic for humanity we we have survived how many thousands of years 300000 years uh, hopefully we survive at least 300000 more so okay. i am optimistic overall and the obvious plan for survival should be space exploration and keeping bits and pieces of human biology in space as well i think it makes sense for us to make the leap to the next uh, next frontier until recently the final frontier was was the ocean that's where you would go and explore but now we have discovered everything there is to discover on the surface of the planet so now it makes sense for us to make the leap to the moon and to mars i think there's a new space race that's beginning right now uh, india is also involved we have a spacecraft right now on the way to the moon right so uh, that is the next frontier i think by 2030 by the 2030s 2040s we're going to have people definitely on the moon maybe indians as well and we're going to have the first steps on mars as well so i think that's a great step for humanity eventually we're going to who knows uh, travel far and wide so trs clips has all sorts of videos and all sorts of playlists make sure you explore the channel by subscribing and heading to our home page reading through all the playlists happens through curiosity